if you follow American politics and their stories and their news, you think America is hell. Mm. The youth in this country are somewhat discouraged. We just want a jackpot. Did you ever feel like Jack Brennan at one point in your life? Ghana is great. Until you talk to a Ghanaian. And they're like, ah, they're like, you hey. don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> the apartment building we built. Yeah. A year later is 90 million. What? 90 million. No <laughs> way. Yeah, I'm 27. Ah. Like, I'll, I'll be 27 in August. I feel you like <laughs> <laughs> If you mm -hmm. study hard in school, yeah. you'll be like that with it. Wow. I, I, I it put... starts in your head. Yes, it did. <laughs> Though I later found that that's not exactly true. <laughs> I noticed that most investors, mm -hmm. they buy investment property like they're living there. Mm. So they're like, oh, this house is not comfortable for me. We did beauty for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the truth. Hello, guys. Welcome back again to another amazing, amazing episode. And as you guys already know, we are here in Nigeria, uh, Lagos, viewing some properties, interviewing developers, you know, building homes for families. And uh, today I do have here one gentleman, very smart, young entrepreneur. You know, he, he is a property developer. He builds home for investment. And I'm privileged to have a you know, have him here with me to have a dialogue about how his journey even began for him. So without further ado, Bright Okereke, uh, yeah. please welcome on the show. Thank you very much. You know, you're very young for what, what you're doing, man. Yeah, yeah. That's True. amazing. True. People are watching you for the first time. They might not know who you are. Please briefly introduce yourself to the people watching. Okay. My name is Bright Okereke. I'm a real estate developer who built more than 14 houses in Lagos, particularly on the mainland. One of the unique things we do is we build properties for investment mm -hmm. in the sense that we build the property, we help you manage it, and you consistently get rental income. So you don't have to worry about all the hassle of management. Mm -hmm. We cover it for you. And then we have smaller units. So if you have, mm -hmm. you don't have too much money, you still have it's money affordable. to invest with it. Yeah. So you would say you build affordable homes? Yes, very much For affordable. investments? Yes. All right, so then people purchase these properties and then you put it on rentals for yes. them and then you give them their ROI. Well, yes. And their equity every month or whatever yes. that is. Wow, that's very interesting. I'm curious, you're very young. How did your story begin to even, because I don't know how old you are, but you look young. Uh, wait, can I say how old I am? Yeah. Can I can say, okay, you I'm 27. Want... Ah. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I'm 27. Ah. Like, I'll, I'll be 27 in August. I feel you like <laughs> 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 I do <feel> like that. <laughs> uh, I know. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's that's crazy. Too. Yes. So how did your journey begin? Like, well, I started early. I started when I was twenty. Okay. So when I was twenty, I had this episode in my life. I was going through a crisis, and mm -hmm. I was very particular. What would I do in my life? What do I do? What do I do? Then mm -hmm. I said, like, okay, it seemed like I have a knack for business, for running businesses. Mm -hmm. I started noticing that for a while I've been doing it yeah. as a layman. But I was like, okay, you know what? Let me really focus on this. Let me see if I can build something significant. So I had a, I have a partner. Mm -hmm. We partnered up. We were roommates in my first level in university. Wow. So we we're roommates, we we're friends. Yeah. And then I met with him. He's very passionate about real estate. Then really? me, I was passionate about the money. Mm -hmm. So we met with him. <laughs> okay, this real estate thing, yeah. it seems like there's a market for it. Mm -hmm. Let's start by helping students get hostels. Mm -hmm. So we started a company named Get Hostel Services. We we're helping students in Unilag get hostel. I see. And then things said working out well. And then our focus was mm -hmm. to change how the industry operates. Mm -hmm. And we quickly realized that agents don't have much control. Okay. Okay. So when you're an agent, you only they give you property, you don't have any control to how the property looks, mm -hmm. how they are rented, the prices they are rented at, you don't have any control. Just so, advertise. Just advertise, that's all. They realize that if we want to make a significant impact in the industry, we have to become developers. Mm. So we started looking at how we can do that. And then slowly we're making that different by making our apartment a lot nicer mm -hmm. than what you regularly see. Mm -hmm. Like most of people enter our property, they're like, ah, it looks like houses on the island. Mm -hmm. Because that is this mindset that mainland houses are ugly. Look, oh yeah. Island houses are fine. Yeah. And we're changing our narrative to make sure that, yeah, People mainland houses people. can be fine and they can be profitable too. I like that. Yeah. Well, but you do have, I mean, being young with this kind of mindset that you have and being able to build yourself to this level. Yeah. You Have you ever traveled abroad? Yes. Okay. I just started traveling oh, really? last year. So, oh, so you, you started this even before traveling? 
Yes, yes. No, I, okay. I, I, I went out to the morning to travel. Yeah, <laughs> it was very this day yeah. like becoming significantly successful. That's where you can I could afford. afford to travel. <laughs> really? Like I, I was not rich enough to just yeah. travel then come back. No. Wow. So it's when I started making enough money from being yeah. a developer. I said travel, and I've not traveled yeah. too far. Mm-hmm. So I've mostly been to African countries. Oh, really? Been to. I mean, you have Ghana? a Ghana accent. Yeah, I'm yeah, a Ghana. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was in Ghana <laughs> oh, really? last month. Oh, wow. It was really nice. Where were you in Ghana? Were you? I, read, I was at Accra. Accra. Accra I'm and Ghana. what was that place where yeah. they have mountain regions? Ebri. Ebri. Where they do this skydiving thing. Be... Oh, Kwewu. Kwewu, yes. Oh, wow. I was there. That's amazing. So I was in those two places. Ghana was very fun. Wow. So I that period, I did a tour from Benin yeah. Republic to Togo and Oh, wow. Are you, were you trying to pros- you see you know prospect of investing in, in this area? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Like when I was in Ghana, I had to call some people to find out like some realtors there. Yeah. How much do you guys ba- sell your houses, houses in this area? Because the area I stayed was really nice. Mm-hmm. It was close to the airport. Mm-hmm. Uh I forgot to say the name. East Legon. East Legon, yes. East Legon, yes. very yes. close to East Legon. That yes. East Legon area, yeah. that's where I was. Oh wow. So the houses they were really yeah. nice and was yeah. serene. So I, I made some calls. I was like, okay. Yeah. It can work. It wow. can work. It can you work should come to But you yeah. know, not to be tough, but I'm saying like, look, where, where did you get your mindset from? Is it like your mom? What was your upbringing like? Let's go back to the beginning of oh, your story. Oh, good Wow. Because look, <laughs> trust yeah. me, like 20 years starting thinking about real estate at 20 years old. Trust me, I was not thinking about real estate. Oh, yeah. So obviously you, you, you do have a different environment that puts you in that mindset. Of okay. believing it's possible and even starting that for yourself. So let's just go back a little bit, not too deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, not too deep bit. exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. how I grew up, it's like yeah, uh, just a little bit. Just is, know, I think why you are, you are speaking, right? I realized that maybe I'll see my dad. Yeah, my dad was sold pipe dreams to me, mm. so it was in my ears a lot. So whenever like a successful person does something, yeah. it comes to me like if you read hard, you're going to be like this guy. Wow. I remember one time I wasn't doing well in school, and then I think Dango Day. Yeah. I think he went public with one of his companies or yeah. he did something very similar yeah. was in the papers and yeah. people were talking about him. Yeah. And my dad came to me and said, you know, you can't be like that because I'm like, eh. Yeah. Mm. And his, his story was, if you mm-hmm. study hard in school, yeah. you'll be like that with it. Wow. And I, I it put, stuck in your head. Yes, it did. <laughs> I put all my work, all my thoughts, like yeah. if I do it in school, do I later find that that's not exactly true. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how it works. Yeah. But it made me have this confidence that I could do it. Mm. So another thing, when it comes to real estate, mm-hmm. I when we started, I wasn't particular about real estate. Mm-hmm. It was my partner. Mm-hmm. My partner has been obsessed with properties. So what made me met him mm-hmm. to talk about real estate was when we were in year one. Yeah. Then we he approached me that mm-hmm. he wanted to lease a property. Okay. So I was I, I he knew that I'm a guy that knows yeah. people and knows places. He met me said. We wanted to lease a property yeah. that I should help him get one. Mm. I'm like, okay, no problem, let's go and get. We went around our school area, we found the property mm-hmm. for lease. It was a one bedroom. So mm-hmm. his plan was he wanted to use it for hostel. Mm. My plan was I would help him lease it, I collect my agency fee, and I go. Wow. That was my plan. Me, I didn't have much interest yeah. in it. So we found one. It was for 1.2 million, 17 year lease. Mm-hmm. And he didn't have the money. So the next thing he wanted to take a loan. He went to meet some banks and everything. Mm-hmm. and. He was on that age. He was 17. Oh, wow. He was 17. I was 19 there, but he was 17. Wow. And then it was it was funny because he's trying to get a loan and nobody would give an mm-hmm. underage person a loan. Yeah. And then he met me. I'm like, okay, you, you are above 18. How about you go and apply? I'm like, no. <laughs> 1.2 so million <laughs> debt at 19. Yeah. And, uh, nah, hell no. I think I was 18. I was like 19. Yeah. I was 18. Yeah. 1.2 million. I was like, no, no, no. So he was the one that like basically sold that seed mm-hmm. of real estate. Mm-hmm. Then when we now started, mm-hmm. I now say I realized, okay, I can make good money That's from potential. this. And then like, there's a lot of potential here. Like mm-hmm. we could actually make this a big thing. Yeah. And then I bought into that dream and it became so what it is. So what was your first project? First project, Cambridge Apartments. Okay. It's a property in um, Jibo side, in mm-hmm. Fadi. So also mainland. Also mainland, okay. yes. So because we came from Unilag, mm-hmm. we had a lot of experience here. We've, we've been to the island. We had a short, like a year, mm-hmm. 2020, we were in, on the island. And mm-hmm. we didn't see much success there. Mm-hmm. And then we started looking back and like, okay, look at where we came from. There's a lot of room to grow here. And there's not a lot of developers doing mm-hmm. things here. And we thought, okay, if we build things here, we can change the narrative. I like that. From, from the, the mainland. Yeah. And then 
We'll see if we can explore that side later. Yeah. But is it Jabba or what is it? Yabba. 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 Yabba, mm. Yabba is, uh, I mean, I look, you'd go to Makuko, you'd go to Unilag. Yeah. You see the environment. Why would you choose? I mean, you said, obviously, the, there's a uh, market here. But let's talk about the nitty gritty of it. Why okay. is it making sense for a developer like yourself to choose a location like this to situate this property? The advantages of it. Yeah. This is with Yabba. It's very central. Mm. I particularly think that if they ha- if we had more land space and mm. good developers here mm. we would have the same level of buzz the island has because yaba is very central so if mm-hmm. you live in yaba you have access to the airport yeah it's closer to the airport it's close, it's close to the island mm. it's close to ikeja which is the capital of the states mm-hmm. any major city you want to go to within lagos yaba is just right in the middle of it mm. and then we have like four or five universities in mm-hmm. the same Yaba. Mm-hmm. And the infrastructure, good road network, good water. Mm-hmm. I said good water. <laughs> but the one for drinking, there's no water on our roads. It's all flooded, yeah. right? And the land is good. Mm-hmm. I wanted to even start a project this year mm-hmm. on the island. And I went there and I'm like, I understand why their prices are crazy. Yeah. They took me to, all I saw was a pool. Yeah. They brought me there like, you should build here. And I'm seeing water. <laughs> and water get, it's, like. a, it's a lake. That place wow. is everywhere what I like. They brought me to a lake. Because <laughs> I just think like, yeah, like, where will I even start? Yeah. <laughs> and for here, most of the lands are really yeah. good. They are really good. Mm-hmm. And even the cost of construction is a lot less than mm-hmm. there. And mm-hmm. then Nigeria has young population. Mm-hmm. We have a very large, long, we well, mostly young. Mm-hmm. And it seems like there's nobody catering to housing for them. Mm-hmm. Like what we it's only be learning for big men. For big, big men, exactly. Like yeah. Two bedroom, three bed. That's like if you check, we only do studio one bed yeah. mostly. Mm. Because the young population are now there mm-hmm. struggling for any hour. Because house. sometimes the young population want they want to pay one year in advance. Yes. And there's no way they can buy or yeah, stay in these two bedrooms. They can't stay in those big no. houses. In yeah. fact, most of our unit now you pay yeah. monthly. Oh really? Yeah, so you can move in with very little money. Wow. So like, you pay more, you don't have to that's mm-hmm. like like this one is yeah. furnished. Let's talk about this one. Mm-hmm. If you want to move in, you yeah. don't have to gather anything. Mm-hmm. You just make enough money to pay your first month when you move in. That's it. And then you pay everything. No month. deposits? Obviously deposits. No, no, no de- deposits. No deposit. The only deposit you do is um caution fee. Okay. Which is hundred thousand. That one's refundable. Oh, I see. So in case you don't break anything. anything. So if you break anything, so yeah. that's the only thing you pay. Your rent, your caution fee, you move. Wow. So I can bring my um hundred thousand as a caution fee. Yeah. Bring my one month's rent. rent and I can move in the next day. Exactly. Interesting. And it's fully furnished. Fully furnished. Interesting. We, we we put solar, mm-hmm. we put generator, put mm-hmm. no so you get twenty four hours electricity. Wow. So wow. it's not just fully furnished, you get twenty four hours electricity on in it. In the middle of Yaba. Yes. So, and it's mostly, most of our tenants yeah. are young people who, some of them work mm-hmm. online. In mm-hmm. fact, their house is their office. Mm. They stay in the mm. office mm. at home all the time. So electricity is very electricity important. Electricity is very important. So we provide all those things and we see that it's, it's a market that needs us. And it's funny because we are young too. Yeah. We understand, so you understand the struggle. We understand. In fact, I've been there. Mm-hmm. I've I've had money and then yeah. could not find a good place. Yeah. Because everybody's building for Big three man. bedroom, <laughs> four bedroom, five bedroom. Yeah. And people building studio are not doing any hour any hour houses. Wow. So we had to come into the market to yeah. create that for. I like that. Let's talk about. I mean, you've had how many houses have you built so far? You said what? 13? 14. 14. 14. And then let's talk about this specific one. How many floors is it? How many rooms and, and stuff like that? So this one now is um, four floors. So okay. ground plus three. Okay. And then we have over 20 rooms here. I see. So some studios, some one bedroom. Mm-hmm. Interesting. What, what was the challenges you went through, you know, building or even putting up these properties that you've been, you've been doing so far? So far, yeah. inflation. That's inflation. The, that's uh, the one that keeps me up at night. <laughs> I was at one event with Axa Master yeah. and they were like, what keeps you up at night as a developer? I yeah. inflation. It keeps me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> but we thank God over time we've found some ways to go around it. Yeah. But it's something that, that it's a big yeah. problem wow. because a lot of times you yeah. start building mm-hmm. before you complete. Prices have gone up. So it's hard to make um, So how do you manage? Let's say somebody has have paid for property. How much is one how much is one of these going? This the studio is going for twenty eight. Twenty eight million now. Yes. So the person has paid you twenty eight million. Mm. You've already converted the dollars, you know how much it is. Yeah. You know the materials that you want to buy. Exactly. The next morning the money has depreciated. How do you find the liquidity to to, to continue? Yeah. So what, what we do is we try not to sell all our units okay. at once. Okay. So we 
sell some, mm-hmm. we take the money, we go and buy material immediately. Mm. So the more the more the more extra account, max one week we spent it because wow, we used to go and okay. buy. So if we want to build the house now, most of the materials we bought it down. Interesting. Interesting. So that way, if price goes up, goes yeah. down, it doesn't concern. We have yeah. the material on site. Yeah. Then secondly, we don't sell all. Mm-hmm. We keep some so that. If there is inflation, mm-hmm. we can adjust those units, units to fit the new price to balance it, to balance it up. That's so smart. So I we like keep. It. So that's the strategy. But over mm-hmm. time now, now we have more cash available. Mm-hmm. We are looking at um, building first mm-hmm. before we sell. Oh, that's so also good profit. Wait, for you. yeah, because wait. Offline to build is it. cheaper. Offline is cheaper, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we wait, we build, so we sell it at the current market price mm-hmm. no discount no I nothing. like that if you already give us money you call it. <laughs> so that way it's easy for wow, us that's amazing let's let's talk about i mean look it, it's not easy like trust yeah. me the mindset you have and what you've been able to build is it's it's mind-blowing for 27 years i'm 28 Oh, so it's obviously you know the youth in this country are somewhat discouraged you know and not even in nigeria even yeah. in ghana we just want to jackpot True. Did you ever feel like Jackpot at one point in your life? <laughs> with me, I've, I've never really understood it. Yeah. Like personally, yeah. even as I traveled, right? Yeah. I, I was. I used to tell people that I think I'm planning to go to Europe yeah. in the next couple of weeks to see. Yeah. Maybe when I reach there, I can see why yeah. everybody wants to run yeah. away. But for me, it has always been. I like other countries. They are nice, but mm. it's nice when you don't stay there mm. because Nigeria, the is, Ghana is great until you talk to a Ghanaian. And they're like, ah, they're like, you hey. don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to Ghana, I loved it. It was amazing. <laughs> like, we were in the bus. We were, it was just driving up yeah. and down, having fun. Mm-hmm. Until you see how they Ghana, they're like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. Is the one. I saw one on yeah. the, one of like, one bridge in Nigeria talking yeah. about how Nigeria infrastructure is better. <laughs> in Nigeria, we never agree to that. Yeah, why do you think we have that mindset, though? Because it, it's, it's just there's me, opportunity around. Everybody, it's the grass is green on the other side. Mm. I, I've seen videos of people in the US saying US is the worst country in the world. Mm. And I'm looking at them like, you have what no are you talking about? Like, and that's the way it feels. So I feel if you more of attack that your mindset of what can I do? Mm-hmm. What can I, how can I make things work? Mm-hmm. There are some people, it's a great idea to mm-hmm. jack or go. Mm-hmm. It's really it good. Help them. It helps them a lot. Mm-hmm. But there are just some people that it's not for them. Mm-hmm. They, they have, because there are a lot of opportunities in Nigeria, there are mm-hmm. a lot of opportunities in other places. So it's just to find out which one suits mm-hmm. you best. Mm-hmm. So for me, I knew that I was not a fan. That's it. I knew I was not a fan. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what, this Nigeria, I mean. And also for me, I wanted to do it in Nigeria, particularly to also encourage people so that. There'll be time like this where I'll talk about it and mm-hmm. it makes sense. Because exactly. a lot of young people, we we when I started, mm-hmm. one thing I heard mm-hmm. a lot was you can't do it in Nigeria. Mm. Yeah, well, like, who were telling you this? Your my friends. friends. Oh wow. My friends, some family members, because for them it was like you cannot just wake up one money and just say I just say you want to build a business yeah. and like they call it aspire to prospire. You know, all these motivational <laughs> yeah. books and all those because I was really love those. Yeah. I was like, you can't do it. It's, it's read the book. Mm. Like, is that guy not in the US? Mm-hmm. That guy's in the US. You, yeah. you can only do it in the US. US. You can't do it in Nigeria. Nigeria. And for me, it was like, what is so bad about Nigeria? I see there are problems. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Yeah. I can tell you Nigeria has problems. Mm-hmm. But also, Opportunity. Opportunity. When there's problem, there's opportunity. Exactly. So you can you can definitely do mm-hmm. good big things in Nigeria. I like that. Let's just come back to um I think selling of the there's a question that I want to ask. Um the, yes, the selling of it. Because yeah. you, you I think I found out that you do sell it. Yeah. So example, if I want to buy this one that we're sitting mm. in here, I pay my twenty eight million eight million and then you I, I hand it over to you. Yeah. And then you manage it. I want you to be able to break that down, the whole process of me even buying it, you know, my arrow eyes, how how many how long will okay. I get my money back? Okay, yes. So for this particular apartment, right, there are two mm. major reasons people buy mm. units. One is capital gains, where okay. you buy a twenty eight, you sell at the higher price later. Mm. One of our previous projects is one we sold it last year. There are some people that bought 11.5, some mm-hmm. people bought 13. Mm-hmm. Now they are selling for 22, 20. So they, they just were, let me buy and sell later. Mm-hmm. Fast deal. Mm-hmm. Now there is the RI part. Like this particular one, now you yeah. buy for 28, mm-hmm. 
we rent it out. We give around three hundred thousand a month to you. Mm, okay. It's not fixed. It's mm-hmm. going to be minimum of three hundred thousand. So see. over time, it grows. It grows. It grows from three hundred, three fifty, four hundred, and in the next four years, you see that you're making a lot more money. When before we usually have properties for lease. Mm-hmm. In 2021, I sold a property to a client, a mm-hmm. studio like this, yeah. but not furnished. I sold mm-hmm. it to him for three million. Okay. I went to the place, he bought two. Mm-hmm. Three million, 20 years lease. Mm-hmm. So only for 20 years. We have some projects like that. Mm-hmm. You're only for 20 years. Okay. And I went to meet went to meet his manager and I asked her, How much did you make in February? Yeah. And she was like, the two units, eight hundred thousand. Wow. I'm like, what? Eight hundred thousand for two units. Almost and I million. did the math. That's 50, almost fifty percent off. Mm-hmm. And I did the math. In a year, they'll be making around Eight million at least, or let's even say seven million. Wow. That is more money than you use in buying. That's more than four hundred percent. Yes, in one year, it's crazy. Wow. Like this apartment now, yeah. you are looking at three hundred, mm-hmm. but in three years' time, mm-hmm. it might be six hundred, four hundred. Before you start realizing that in a year, I'm making forty percent mm-hmm. of money is in buying mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So if you have that long term mindset mm-hmm. with investing, you are That's good it. to go. Wow. Like you are good to get wow. spent. like that long term mindset yeah. because it's yeah. not going to be gone in ten years. No. And if when we manage it properly for you, mm-hmm. that money keeps growing, it keeps Coming increasing, you keep getting bigger and bigger. And the population is increasing because I see a lot of Ooh. people are moving out from uh island to the mainland, to the mainland. because yes. it's expensive there. It's very and then expensive. the university is still around, it's at vintage points. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So wow. it's not even just that like, there's one uh, philosophy uh, we like to say theory I usually yeah, yeah. tell people is my family now, when we started <laughs> off, we were five. Yeah. We're six. Yeah. Four children, mm-hmm. mother, father. We're all staying in the same house. One apartment. Yeah. Over time, we've all gone out of the house to get our own apartment. Yeah. Now, me, I have my own apartment. Mm-hmm. All my siblings have their own apartment. Mm-hmm. Now, we'll go from a family of mm-hmm. six living in one apartment to a family of six living in five apartments. So then demand of... The Nigeria demand, exactly. Has come the demand has come. And Nigeria has mm-hmm. a lot more young people. Youth. So over the next years, more and more of them will yeah. be growing up to all need the their children, own apartment. All the children now will be 18 in the next 18 years. And that demand is going to that be... That demand, exactly. We have a lot of young people. So there are some that are 14 now that will be needing house in the next four years, the next wow. five years. Wow. And we, we are there trying to build enough. Yes. So that when they grow up, we are there for them. Oh, that's so smart. <laughs> but why do you think developers know this and most developers don't want to touch this market? Money. Money. Yeah. Oh, the the other ones you make mm-hmm. money well, good money yeah. and like big cash one big time. Ca- yeah, yeah, and you well. make a lot of money and you are good. Mm. This one, the money trickles, but mm-hmm. then the more you do, the more you get. I see. But the other one, you can mm-hmm. do like one project, you make mm-hmm. so much money. Mm-hmm. In fact, most times you make so much money where you don't have to do too many. Really, this one you have to do so many to to yeah. make good money. Yeah, like if you do this, okay, you make this, yeah. you do that. So you have to like yeah. that's why we have fourteen. Mm. In like three years, we have 14. And wow. next year, we'll probably do 14 in one year. Wow. But for the other one, it's a lot easier to manage. You just do one big project. Mm-hmm. You make your good money. Mm-hmm. You go. But for us, it's beyond money. Yeah. We want to build something that will actually affect the industry. I like that. Yeah. Well, what lessons have you learned, you know, so far, your journey in real estate that you feel like you can share with the world? The real estate-based journey? Yeah. I think what I've learned is long term. Mm. Like if you're going to do anything, both in business, mm. investing, mm-hmm. is the people who think long term that wins. I see. There is this saying that the people who have the best portfolio in the mm-hmm. stock market, people who are dead. <laughs> yeah, because they they, are, they they have no choice. So you just yeah, yeah. they are not touching it. Yeah. So their portfolio usually do the best. Wow. So if you have that long, even mm-hmm. in business, if you have that long term approach, mm-hmm. you would. Do, when I was selling the unit yeah. for three million, yeah. the client didn't know. In four year, three years time, that's how much you've been making. I didn't even know. Mm. I didn't send him if that. You, you bought it yourself. I would have sold it higher. No, I'm sure I would have sold it at the higher price. If I knew that's how much you would be yeah. making from it. What I told him when he bought was 500000 a year. Wow. That's what I told him. That is making five wow. to seven million a year. Wow. So if I had known, wow. even me myself, I underrated. Yeah. Most times when we finish building, yeah. we find out we underrated mm-hmm. apartment mm-hmm. again and mm-hmm. again and again because long term like three that. years five years yeah. six years once you now get there mm-hmm. you realize oh my god i've actually done something mm-hmm. there is this strategy i'm working for myself mm-hmm. where all these apartments i own a couple of them like, myself it, it makes I'm, sense, <laughs> it makes no, sense. Me, i cannot be giving it out i don't keep yeah, for me no. so the strategy is yeah. 
if I get one, I'll make it 300,000. By the time I have to, so I have a yeah. few now. Now I'm making like close to a million a month. Okay. And then I want to grow it. The cash flow from the cash flow from okay. what I own. Okay. So I'm obsessively like I don't own stocks, I don't own crypto, I don't. I'm obsessively Nothing. investing in real estate mm-hmm. to get it to a significant amount where mm-hmm. the money is now significant that I can throw the entire thing to stock. Another project. No, no to stock. I can throw it into stock market, okay, 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 okay. and I'm not afraid to lose it mm. because if I lose it next year, I'll get another one. <laughs> if because I carry it, I'm putting crypto. Yeah. If it goes to zero. Yeah. Next year, I'll be on the I like that. Because rent is yeah. it's safer. It's safe. It's safer. And I think someone told me that the best way to save your money is in, 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 the, in the ground, which is yeah. building properties. Yeah. And that's very true. It's very good. It's it never, very the good. price never goes down. It's always going up. Most cases, yeah. I like it. It never goes down. I think a lot of diaspora has been very scared in investing on the land because of scams. Yes. Some people, I mean, look, this property is beautiful. I know people watching might probably want to kind of get... I think their money, I can just literally come here for a holiday, buy this property and put it in your hands and I get my mm, true. Right? Yeah. But then sometimes people get a lot of, you know, like, ah, oh, is it genuine? Please come, yeah. Let, let's talk about that aspect and what you did differently to win the the, the trust of you know, your investors into this kind of property. Yeah. So so you see with building mm-hmm. trust is the first thing is at the beginning it yeah. was a lot harder. Mm-hmm. Because the only way to build trust is to look into the person's past mm. so then we didn't have much past now like i'm saying we have 14 buildings yeah. i can drive you to all 14 yeah, exactly and most times when right. i take a client yeah. and i show this project and that project they're like okay yeah I'm there's convinced. there's no way this yeah. person is a scam mm. right so it helps a lot in fact that's the number one thing mm. most of the success we're facing now is because of the other projects we've delivered mm. some mm. of like the, the person referred me yeah. to you guys yeah yeah he has been with us like two years he has watched wow. it for yeah. two years yeah. so now he's when he makes a referral yeah. he knows that i i know this guy yeah yeah over so I time was, I, I was asking let me just mm. tell you i was asking why will you choose to bring me exactly <laughs> and then he explained to me i'm like oh wow that's so smart yeah like you would have seen it yeah. over so i think usually is to check history that's one way to yeah. safeguard and more important if it's a property Check it, mm-hmm. titles, mm-hmm. land documents. Mm-hmm. Have I think it doesn't cost much to do due diligence. Yeah, 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 it's like much. 30, 50,000 mm-hmm. naira. You can get all the information, so you and know okay, you. this person has the right to actually sell this property. Mm-hmm. So that helps to but mm-hmm. for the developer, mm-hmm. it's history. What has this developer done? Mm-hmm. I think at this point we've done a lot, mm-hmm. like. A, a, lot, a lot just a lot of buildings i, I like yeah. that now I'm, i want you to be able to send some messages to even diasporans themselves okay we've often be like i don't want to go back to nigeria nigeria is of no good there's security concerns you've ov- obviously identified an opportunity and i've capitalized on it now i mean just, just mention making one a million just from this right you know, yeah what would you say to a diaspora you know that is contemplating or even moving their self or their money back to nigeria, nigeria where they came from yeah, I, I think if, the way I see it is every every country has problems. Mm-hmm. I follow American politics a lot. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, if you follow American politics and their stories and their news, you think America is hell. Mm-hmm. The news really? exaggerate things. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> like, if you yeah. talk to somebody who has... I had a client that called me like, ah, I want to come back to Nigeria, but I'm scared they'll kidnap me. Ah. Yeah. And I'm like, you realize that most of the kidnappings happen in like... Not in Lagos, like yeah, certain north, areas, north, mostly yeah. the north, yeah. yeah, certain areas, and then compared to the actual population, mm. it's not that many. Mm. It's the same way if you watch US like negative tr- the news travel, travel faster, faster. So they think it's the yeah, it's this. very bad. Like if you watch US news, mm-hmm. right, mm. you would think that every they are shooting everybody on the streets. Mm. I remember one time they gave a star, I asked somebody, How many people do you think, how many black yeah. people do you think the police shot a year? Mm-hmm in us mm-hmm. for this year and person yeah. like 50 100 1000 mm-hmm. it was tough oh wow it was tough mm-hmm. but the way the news is mm-hmm. it looks like every week they kill everybody. they kill like they're killing wow. people a lot so the, the media in, the media in general just exactly generally it's they, their they business listen to the media it's their that's how they they make their money mm. if they push news like that sensationalism and all those things it goes viral mm. they make their money so for nigeria same thing happens there's the virality to the mm. news where it exaggerates it mm. a lot more than, than it actually. actually is. Like, it's not like the whole place is on fire mm-hmm. and they're killing people <laughs> on the road. It's really yeah. like, but it's yeah. bad. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's not bad, but the news. And then when you don't have the reality on ground, yeah. when you are there, 
you see those news and mm-hmm. you're like, oh my God, how are people dead? Mm-hmm. Like the US, yeah. people think like, how are people even surviving the US? Because you see, ah, somebody entered the store and just shoot everybody. Mm-hmm. And if you are in Nigeria and listen to those, you'll be like, How? I'll never go to a store. Yeah, no. But when you go to the US, people are entering stores everywhere. Every because maybe there are certain areas, certain communities mm. where those things happen. Mm. But then when the news come out, they say US, mm. Mm. And then it looks like that's what's happening like everywhere. Yeah. Do, do you think diaspora investments are safe in Nigeria after what happened to one property that was demolished? Demol- yes, mm. yes, yes. It's safe. The thing is, mm. I think it's a risk thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when you when you want to invest, mm-hmm. right? I know nobody wants to lose their money, mm-hmm. but there's a risk to it. Mm-hmm. In fact, business is risky, it's risky yeah. right? I, I was, I was, I know it doesn't sound like I'm assuring them, mm-hmm. but even your properties in the US are not all that safe. I see a lot of this can happen. Mm-hmm. Government can seize it, mm-hmm. and that's what you can do. Maybe, yeah. maybe for what you did or something. Yeah. I think what you just have to do is do your own part. Mm-hmm. Make sure you've confirmed everything. And most times, I'll tell you, most yeah. of the people they demolished, mm-hmm. they, the people know. The people know what they did. Mm. They are aware. The people who buy, maybe they didn't do proper due diligence. Mm. I like that. I want you to send third best advice to investors considering investing in Nigeria market, even Lagos. Okay. Third best Three advice. best advice. One, most important, mm-hmm. think long term. Mm. Any investment you want to do, think about it like, okay, what would this look like in five years? Mm-hmm. With this make sense in five years, will mm-hmm. I be able to keep this going mm-hmm. in the next five years? So it's do your due diligence. Mm-hmm. Like check the land documents mm-hmm. particularly, okay? Mm-hmm. What is the title? Who mm-hmm. bought to who gave to who? Mm-hmm. And I think the last one is stop looking for shiny things. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. One, that one is so important. People buy based on I, I know like it's it's I use it in my marketing yeah. too, but look beyond the shiny things. For example, right, mm. I was talking to my team today. I was like, the one of the buildings we did last year, yeah. we built it, we sold it for 450 million. Okay. It's the whole apartment the complex. The whole apartment complex, mm-hmm. right? We sold it to different people. Mm-hmm. Each person bought it in the body. Oh, I've come over so far, 450 million. Mm-hmm. The same last year, you'd use that 450 million to buy a house in Lekki. Mm-hmm. And it would be maybe a five bedroom duplex. That's it. Or maybe a mm-hmm. six bedroom or seven bedroom. Now that six bedroom duplex mm-hmm. rents for about ten million mm-hmm. or fifteen year. million a year. Mm-hmm. The apartment building we built, yeah, yearly rent is ninety million. A yearly rent is ninety million. What? Ninety million. I was just like, it doesn't. It it sounds very realistic, but it's actually what it is. But wow. most people will see the apartment building mm-hmm. and just like, nah. It's okay. That's, like, <laughs> like, that's what I'm thinking. You know, they just see that they go, they go for those fancy ones, yeah. and then they're like, that is an investment. Yeah. Yes, it's an investment. But mm-hmm. what are your returns like? Mm. How much are so you actually making? Follow the money making? more and not. Yeah, like ignore mm. all the fanciness and actually look at the money mm. because the money is really good, mm. and that's why every investor or every business. Yeah, like, it, it's, it's and the funny thing is. The value appreciation to what is there. Mm. Now, if you want to sell those units, you can look at it's so beautiful. Yeah. Now you own that apartment yeah. building, right? There are like 20 units there. Yeah. Let's say you have a need for 50 yeah. million. Mm. You don't have to sell the whole building to raise 50 million. Yes, one you sell probably. three or four or two. You get your 50 yeah. million, you still have the rest. Mm-hmm. So that way and you can buy it back later. <laughs> and it's, thank you. And it's, it will make it faster to yeah. liquidate. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. it's easier to liquidate those three that you're selling for maybe 25, 25 that million is, than to liquidate, liquidate the one. entire one for like 450 or 500 or 600 million. Because most people I have seen that they sell their houses below value mm-hmm. because they need quick money. Mm. And the problem is house is 100 million. You need actually 30 million. Yeah. But because you can't sell your house in parts, you have to sell the whole 100 million. Mm. But when you have a whole building and you have parts, you can sell a part. Mm. Like now if I need money, yeah. I need to sell my entire portfolio. Mm. I just said a part. A part of it. I still have the rest. I get the money I need so to do what I want to do. It makes more economical sense yes. to buy this kind of, do this kind of investment than just buying one money. Yeah, because okay. an extension of that do not pass. I noticed that most investors, mm-hmm. they buy investment property like they are living there. Mm. So they're like, oh, this house is not comfortable for me. We didn't build it for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the truth. We didn't build it for you. You are a family man with... Children, yeah. this is not the kind of apartment. This apartment, I mean, yeah. for young people that are just single. Exactly. We know what they want. Yeah. They're like, oh, you need to put two, two car park. I'm yeah. like, you, you are you assuming they have cars. Yeah. We, we've built 14 of those. Yeah. And I can count how many cars in all the building combined. Oh, wow. That's because, a lot. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot. Right? So 
people okay. invest mm-hmm. based on what they like mm. and it's not, not the what same is, thing. the market is not what the for. market is demanding for mm. exactly so i want to buy a house i'm like i want to do three bedroom i only do three bedroom because mm. i'm thinking i will stay in a three bedroom no. but you are not the market look for what the market will actually so favor. Always follow the data yeah follow mm. the numbers mm-hmm. instead of looking for that's the same thing they do with the houses yeah. where they buy those fancy lucky houses yeah it's because oh i would like to stay here myself at the end of the day you won't rent it and no, people won't even rent it yeah i've been fighting with my dad over this same conversation he was like let's just build something like this one mm-hmm. and then like kind of build six units six units six units and then i'm like this looks ugly <laughs> so, and then he's like, i'm gonna do everything but i didn't like it. i'm like so i brought a new the architecture to develop something different he's looking at me and like so he has seen something that i've not seen but yeah. now you say what you said is it money. clicks that it makes more economical sense. It will bring more money than what I want to do initially. So if I you, know there's more people out there with the same Yeah, problem. what you do will be fine. Yeah. You'll be like it. You'll be proud of it. Better you enter, you feel like, yes, yeah. I love I love this. But will you sell? Yeah, no. Will you sell better than the other one? So you look more of where's the demand, yeah. where's the money. Like and that, that way, by the time you're putting I have clients that are selling their properties just mm. because it's mm. not renting. Mm. It, one was even telling me that he has like three properties in Lekki, it's mm. empty. Wow, that's so too expensive. Nobody's renting it. Mm-hmm. There are some that rent. Mm-hmm. See, please, I'm not sharing the location. Yeah, some good deals are there. Mm-hmm. Fat, very good deals are I there. Mean for the demographic, just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, are, there are good deals there. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying that it's not all about what I like, mm-hmm. more of where is the money going to. Mm-hmm. Where's like, I might, I can't live here, mm-hmm. this place now. Mm-hmm. Personally, I won't live here. Yeah. I have, I have, I like, <laughs> I have a bigger <laughs> lifestyle than this, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean I won't buy a unit here because exactly. I know people who would, I know a lot, mm-hmm. and then I just need them to mm-hmm. pay me. I see, and that's. And it. I mean, somebody is, is that in that phase of their life that this is their heart. Desire. Yes, exactly. So if if it's not mm-hmm. yours, doesn't mean it's not somebody's. I like that. Give a words of inspiration to the youth for even their friends telling them it's impossible, like they did to you, but yeah. they ignore that. And then to become who you are now, give a word of inspiration to the youth watching this video right now. It's 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 hard. That's what I can say. It's hard. Like life is hard. Yeah. Then you can't escape yeah. hardship, mm-hmm. especially if you want to have a good life. Mm-hmm. It's it's yin and yang. It works together. So what you should always do is face it regardless mm-hmm. and know what you want. Mm-hmm. Go after it. Get it done. Mm-hmm. Be committed to it. But it's going to be hard. Like there is no mm. need to escape hard mm. or run away from hard, mm-hmm. especially when it's hard that leads to good. Mm. Building a house is hard. Mm. I see it's too much drama. Yeah, I wanted to build one for myself, and I'm like, I'm going to outsource it. <laughs> I am not building free. I thought yeah. it was free. Yeah. Like I can do this work because yeah. I get paid for, paid for it. it. But yeah. building my own house, I'm yeah, not because doing they're it. not paying rent. No, they're not going to pay me yeah. for building it. So yeah. I give it to somebody because it's hard, mm-hmm. but it's also rewarding. Mm-hmm. So. Face the hard, get your reward, mm-hmm. and you'll do better. I like that. Before I let you go, are yeah. you a millionaire yet? In Naira. <laughs> Since, that was not even, it's not, it's not even hard. It's so hard to reach. <laughs> well, what about dollars? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm okay. if you, if you, maybe if you start calculating net worth, yeah. I start changing. You know, yeah. net worth is a very funny it's calculation. Like you to, your assets they start changing together. some things. Maybe yeah. we can push it to reach there. <laughs> but I, I don't think that we go. Naira Millionaire yeah. is quite easy, you know, that one since like yeah. almost every payment is it's it's millions yeah. already. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Thank you so much for talking no to me. I really no enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. We might probably just do a quick tour around and, uh, you know, show you how the property is. So we still have okay. some work we are doing here. Okay. We are already furnishing. So the apartment comes fully furnished. Okay. So our goal is With to the make TV sure and everything. TV and everything. Comes okay. The apartment. So our goal is to make sure that when someone is moving in, they don't have to bring anything. Also, the investor too, as they buy, that's it. Mm. We'll just go straight and start with meeting rent to them. Okay. So we're going to put TV, couch, table and chair. Though this particular apartment is almost ready. Mm-hmm. This is one of our stage units so that you okay. can have a picture of what it looks exactly. like. Looks so this okay. is the parlor. Okay. And then the living room and this is the bedroom. I see. So this is what the bedroom looks like. You guys, let's, let's come in. Mm-hmm. So we still have some things left here. Okay. 
like the wardrobe is not here they're still okay. constructing the wardrobe okay so this is what a sample will look like mm -hmm. so it's to paint a picture for the investor what they should expect okay. especially since we're mm -hmm. also going to be furniture units okay yeah it's good i like it it's very is it minimalist yes <laughs> yeah, you are not doing too much yeah <laughs> just enough to look nice yeah so you said how many rooms are on the floor four it's more than four. It's more about than four. It's eight rooms. Eight four. rooms. So that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and then price. remind me again, how much is this one going for? Is so it this one is different price from different that. price. Okay. This one is forty-five million. Okay. While the other one is twenty. The studio is twenty-eight. While the one bed is forty-five. Oh, I see. I mm -hmm. see. So the studio is cheaper. The studio is cheaper. I think I want a studio. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> we can work on it. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Okay. Thank I you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, do you have a regret? Do I have a regret? Yeah. Hmm. I, I generally don't. Mm -hmm. I, like whenever they say, if you go back 10 years, what would you change? I'll change nothing. <laughs> I, I, I just think it's, yeah. it's part of the fun of life. Yeah. Some things go well, some things don't go well. Yeah. I don't really regret anything so far. Okay, I see. What, what, what do you wish you knew about real estate or you wish you knew in general before you embark on this journey? Uh, what I wish I knew. Yeah. Uh, if, if there's any particular thing, I, I, I wish I had I had gotten a lot more mentorship. Mentorship, okay. Yeah, I, okay. I, it's something that are very big to my heart. Like, I wish I had a lot more direct mentorship. Mm -hmm. Because when I started off, I had to rely on watching YouTube videos mm -hmm. that are mostly Americans. I see. So I wish I had that. If I had that, I think it would have shortened my journey. Mm. Because now at where I am, I'm trying my best to mentor people. Mm. And I've seen how they made their journey faster. I see. So what it took me five years to do, I see them do it in two. I see. Because I'm there to mm. let them know, okay, don't do this, do this, don't do this. So mm. I if I wish I had that. Mm. And it, it, regardless, mm. I thank God for what I, I have. I like that. So you, you do have another property? Yes. In yes. Surulere. In Surulere, yes. Talk to me about it. So that what we call a Leeds apartment. Mm. Okay. So it doesn't come furnish like this, but it's really good. It's in the heart of Surulere. Okay. And Surulere has this vibe. People like Surulere. Most people, most of the clients, when they are watching, yeah. they grew up in Surulere. Really? So Surulere used to be the, like, the lecky of those days. Mm. And this particular one, we're doing the same thing. Yeah. But this time you have to, you can choose. Okay. You can choose to stay there. You can choose to put a, a friend there. You can also choose to put it out for rent. I see. Where you can be getting rental mm -hmm. income too from mm. the one in Surrey. Okay. So we have studio apartment and one bedroom apartment. Okay. The, the studio apartment is going for 25. Okay. While the one bedroom is going for 42 million. Okay, 25 million. 25 for studio, 42 okay. for one bedroom. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Talk to me about that. Are there, is there any other properties available apart from? No, just those two. Just okay. those two. I and see. all of them, we have uh, 24 hours electricity. Okay. Solar and gen. Mm -hmm. And then we also have smart home functions. Okay. So oh, wow. you have your smart door where you use your thumbprint to open another smart home function like the Alexa thing mm -hmm. in your house. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. How many jobs? Do you say you've been able to create with this development you've been working well, so for full-time employment yeah. we have i think over 30 maybe between 30 to 35 full-time staffs okay then contracts we have about 100 okay because we have multiple sites where there are construction going and per site we have close to 20 people working oh, wow so we have over 100 contract staff that's because, amazing yeah. what, what what are you proud of the most if you look back to what you've been able to create well, my, I, I think it's the people. The people. The people, like, it's, it's, it's amazing the impact we've had on both the people and the industry generally. Mm -hmm. I would say for a fact that since we started building on yeah. the mainland, the standard has gone up because of us. Because mm -hmm. most times, when people build, they do anyhow, but we, we set yeah. a new standard where a lot of other developers now follow and then they look at it like, okay, I'll make my houses better than theirs. Mm -hmm. And it creates this like competition, competition. That, that is very good for yeah. the industry.
guys if it's your first time here please don't forget to like the video uh comment down below what you love about this conversation share to friends and family so they also benefit and listen the real estate market here in nigeria is crazy and this is just the beginning uh it makes more economical sense it makes it's, it makes sense you'll be missing out if you don't you know come capitalize on that and uh, yeah, I'm going to leave every link in the description if you want to even get, get this property for yourself. Reach out, you know, to them or in the description. Also, Ciso Global is the partner for this video. Reach out to Ciso Global. They will even book a private viewing for you, even virtual, if you can't make it here. So yeah, if you do have any other message you want to give to people, no, you can message. just message us and we yeah. will work with you. Thank you so much for watching. It's been an amazing one. All right, let's say bye-bye to the people. Thank watching. you. Thank you very Peace. much. All right. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. Sure.